It's clear to me that the Justice Department and the FBI are suffering from a political infection that, if it's not defeated, will cause the American people no longer to trust these storied institutions. It will also threaten the American way of life. Just moments ago, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley taking aim at the federal government and whether the Justice Department has been weaponized against conservatives. This comes one day after Jim Jordan, ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, had this message for former Twitter executives. Listen. You know what, you know what I think happened, Mr. Roth? I think, I think you guys got played. I think you guys wanted to, wanted to take it deep down. We saw what, what the chairman put up where you said, you know, everyone in the White House is, an, is a fascist. I think you guys wanted it to t be taken down. I think you meet with these guys every week. We know that's been established in the Twitter files. I think you guys got played by the FBI. And that's the scary part. Because we had 50, I mean, the, the, this to me is the real takeaway. 51 former intelligence officials five days after you guys take down the Hunter Biden story and block the New York Post account. Five days later, 51 former intel officials send a letter and they say, the Hunter Biden story has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. The information operation was run on you guys, and then by extension, run on the American people. Fox and Friends weekend co-anchor Pete Hegseth joins us now. Hey, Pete, great to see you, my friend. All right, let's start with Senator Grassley's words. He says we've got a political mm -hmm. infection at the Justice Department. How bad is it, Pete? Well, for sure. First of all, congratulations to you, Brian, and your co-hosts on your fantastic new show. It's awesome. Uh, Well-deserved. Thanks, man. Um, and not, does not have a political infection. You guys are good <laughs> and clean. I'll give you a clean bill of health. All right. Uh, he's, ex he's exactly right. Well, maybe you, Brian, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this. It's, of course, completely infected and compromised by political prerogatives, by political people at the top. I don't even have to provide the caveat anymore. Yes, there are good people in the Justice Department and the FBI that are trying to do good work, but many of them want to leave because of the political prerogatives led by Democrats. These are Democrats working with other Democrats to help other Democrats, from what was said by Chuck Grassley to what was said by Jim Jordan, who are using a totally an unelected, unaccountable, distant, power-drunk bureaucracy that all, they never counted on an ounce of sunlight coming into. They never counted on a laptop showing up. They never counted on a, a libertarian uh, buying Twitter. Uh, they never counted on uh, the information that they were doing ever getting out. And so they thought they could act this way with impunity because they, they as the elites, think they know better than us and should shepherd the future they believe we should have. And none of that adds up to equal justice, mm -hmm. which is what makes it so bad for the republic. So, so Congressman Jim Jordan says Twitter got played, Pete. And I understand what he's saying there, but it strikes me that Twitter was pretty interested in playing as well. How do you kind of divide the responsibility line there? It's tough, but it's equal. Uh, I, said, I said it before, it applies in this case as well. It's Democrats helping Democrats. The political donations at Twitter, as you well know, are 90, over 99% to the Democrat Party. They may have been played a little bit, and there were indications that Twitter executives were like, I don't know if we're really supposed to be doing this, but their political instincts and the power that they had uh, meant they were happy to be led along. I think Miranda Devine calls it not prejudice, but prejudice, hmm. meaning they were setting the table, the FBI, for what they wanted Twitter to suppress later, even though internally Twitter was was grappling with the fact that this information was likely authentic, yeah. which the FBI knew was authentic because they'd had it for nine months. <laughs> it was so in their it possession. It was all a collaboration to change an election. Yeah, it was, it was in their possession. There was no question about it. They were trying to bury yeah. it more than they were trying to help anybody understand the contents of it. Pete, I want to switch gears for a sec. I think this is really interesting. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley pushing for legislation that would create a legal age for kids to be allowed on social media. Listen to this. Kids can go online and set up their own accounts. Parents don't know about it. They, they don't have any idea what's happening. The technology is changing faster than parents can keep up with. You know, I, and I can attest to that as a parent. So uh, parents need help here. Pete, you got a gaggle of kids. I got a few myself. What do you make of Senator Hawley's comments here? I agree. Let's set the age at 18 and call it good. How about that? Uh, there, there's very little goodness and light that ever comes from social media for young people. 
I don't, I understand where he's coming from. I, I support him, you know, academically, but this should be a parent's role to understand and guard the heart and soul and mind of your kid and prevent them from being infiltrated by this a type of information through social media. But I, it is a good idea. I don't know what that minimum age will be. I don't know yeah. what he's proposing. But when you consider the fact, the biggest social media company in America today for kids ages four through 18, I don't know why four-year-olds are using it, maybe that's his point, is TikTok. And on average, Chinese-owned TikTok, and on average, they're spending uh, over 100 minutes a day watching four-second idiotic right. clips pumped at us by the communists. Well, uh, this is a real problem that affect, is infecting our body politic and our culture. Yeah. I'm glad he's trying to get at it, but it really should be parents. I mean, just really quickly, uh, Meta this week, they, Facebook, the old Facebook says, they're going to try to pull more teens into their virtual reality app. And, you know, you think about that, Pete, do, do we really need more teens in America in a reality detachment world, or do we need to get them more into face-to-face? -face? That's kind of the issue here, and I'll just leave it at this, Pete. I think the problem for a lot of parents who do believe they should make the decision is there's so much social pressure when their kids go to school and yes. all their friends are on it. And if you ask your kid to not participate, you're basically asking them to step out of social life. I think that's pretty tough, but I appreciate your thoughts on that, Pete. Thanks for joining the show it today. So good to see you, my friend. You got it. Thanks, Brian. All right.